Welcome to the fourth video on teaching in a synchronous environment. In the last video, we covered the following. In this video, we will cover feedback with a focus on the chat, participant pod, and poll features. Feedback, both to the learner and teacher, is essential to make sure learning is going in the intended direction. Just like guiding a rocket to the moon, feedback should occur in a precise and frequent fashion. Without feedback, especially in an online environment where nonverbal cues may be limited, learners can go down an unintentional path of misinformation and teachers may miss addressing learning needs. So how can we facilitate feedback in a synchronous environment? Again, there are multiple ways, but let's look at a few here. The participant pod is accessible from your computer here and your learner's computer here, and allows rapid and nonverbal feedback such as yes, no, to establish buy-in or understanding, coffee cup, need a break, clock, to indicate stepping away, and raise hand to ask questions or permission to talk. The nonverbal reaction pod allows for a thumbs up or clapping icons that will appear directly over the learner's box. Next is chat here. You can click and drag any of the open pods to preferred areas on your screen. I'm going to put chat to the side of my screen so I can scan activity during any pauses, although best practice is to have a co-facilitator or colleague binding the chat so you can focus on the content and group facilitation. The chat pod is essential for multiple functions, including helping learners who are in technical trouble, providing a way for participants to post comments, advice, or questions without interrupting the presentation, posting questions that require a qualitative or reflective answer, getting quick yes-no feedback from a handful of participants, posting additional links and documents to supplemental material, and including learners who are unable to use video or audio streaming or feel more comfortable texting than talking. Keep in mind that some learners may find watching the presentation and scanning the chat too distracting, while others find the additional stimulation helpful to maintain their attention on the presentation. You may also have volunteers or use your second computer to seed the chat with interesting questions or comments to get people participating in the chat. Next, let's move on to another tool to give and receive feedback, polls. Polls need to be uploaded to a scheduled meeting and ideally prior to your presentation. Go to meetings and select the meeting that you want to add a poll to. Scroll to the bottom and click add in the bottom right. Add your title, question, and answer choices. Indicate if this is a single choice, only one answer allowed, or multiple choice, multiple choices allowed, and save. While in your presentation, launch a poll by going to your control bar, click on polls, pick your poll, and launch poll. As people answer, you will see the responses and what percentage of your audience has participated. When ready, end poll and share results with your learners. Polls can be used for an icebreaker, perceived needs assessment, unperceived needs assessment such as MCQ to assess baseline knowledge, skills, or attitudes, multiple response questions to share practice experience, promoting interactivity such as making a clinical decision, assessing pre-post changes in knowledge, recording answers of a vote, giving a voice to those hesitant to talk, decreasing biases, such as gender bias voices or accents, increasing anonymity in contentious or ethically charged topics, allowing for time to reflect on an answer if the poll is kept open, a less tech complex option than open mic, non-judgmental and anonymous competition between or within learners, and commitment to change, feedback, or an exit ticket at the end of the session. One note about polls in Zoom. Your free account doesn't include polls and you can't do the same back-end analytics that other dedicated polling apps such as Socrative or Poll Everywhere allow you to do. So you may want to use a separate back-end polling app for these reasons. Also, remember our first video when we discuss why content needs to be shortened in synchronous learning? Polls require two to four minutes to perform, which is a precious amount of time in this environment. So make sure your educational purpose is worth this time. Consider also having your co-facilitator manage the polls while you use the launch and response time to discuss supplemental content. Take time now to one, reflect on what you've learned and consider how you'll regularly give and receive feedback in your teaching sessions. Two, consider effective teaching principles. 
How will you ensure feedback is specific and frequent throughout your session? Which methods will you use for feedback and how do they match your pedagogical approach to the session? For example, participant pod for quick check-in or lengthier single choice MCQ for anonymous opinion? How will you make your sessions inclusive and give a voice to those learners who are unable to use video and audio streaming? Number three, try out features of Zoom. Using your two computer setup, try non-verbal responses in the participant pod and reaction pod. Post links and documents in the chat and consider questions for seeding the chat. Launch a poll if you have a paid account or try other backend polling apps if you don't. Stay tuned for our next video, number five, on collaborative and social learning with a focus on netiquette and online communication.